Hey friends and welcome. This is Dr. Heather coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather, also known as the Keto Doc. I am going to successfully try to share this to another group. So as you're joining, let us know where you're joining from. Again, I'm going to try to get to share this to another group. Got some exciting stuff to talk about today. I spent several hours today on the first virtual Keto Academy. So if you were able to watch the Keto Academy, please let me know, put down KK down below. Let me know that you attended the first virtual Keto Academy. I've attended the last eight in person where there's literally two to 3,000 people in the same room all learning about what the latest technology, what the latest studies are about ketones, ketone technology, what's happening around the globe in this conversation. And I can tell you, I was actually at the first low carb conversation back in 2000 and 15 back in, um, I think it was in Vail, there were only a hundred people and it was literally people just starting this conversation. Even though we studied ketones for well over a hundred years, it was just a spark that has ignited this huge conversation that is changing people's lives, totally disrupting the health and wellness and nutrition world. So welcome you guys for joining me tonight. I know it's late. It's just been that kind of day, but I absolutely want to make sure that I share this to a couple other pages. So give me just a second here. I want to make sure that I help other people understand what is going on and what's happening. So again, as you're joining me, let me know where you're joining me, friend. I'm going to talk about stress because Dr. Andrew Capitelli did an amazing job. I'm going to summarize what some of the other major speakers talked about. We heard from Nobel Peace Prize winner winners. We talked to heard from authors today from let me see from top authors. I'm trying to do two things at one time. So I'm going to just do this first as you guys are joining. Feel free to tag friends so that they can join us. Maybe it's a page and not a group. I tell you what, I am not good at this. This is why I probably never share a page. Share to a page, share to a page, share to a group. Thanks. Sorry for the silence, guys. I always want to be super mindful of your time. I hope this is being shared successfully. So as we get going here and I'm sharing to our page, I am sharing it to my own page, which is awesome. Um, I want to talk about some of the amazing things we learned today. So if you were there, hey, Tracy, thanks for joining me in Australia. If you were actually watching some of the amazing speakers from Keto Academy today, we'll drop a KK down below so I know you were there. So just to summarize who we heard today and how you can join tomorrow, it is absolutely free. Generally, I spend anywhere from, I don't know, 1000 to $1,500. I know people from Australia spend, well, two to $3,000 as attending this event. We heard from naturopath Dr. Andrew Campbell. Patelli. We heard from Dr. Ken Ford, who's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. He's retired now. He has STEM Talk. If you've never listened to STEM Talk, drop over and catch his podcast. He has amazing speakers on there. It's always outside the box thinking. It's always about reinterventing yourself. He does a lot to do with robots, um, which is what you know the next technology is, how we get robots to sweep up moon craters into a dustpan. I know I'm just speaking funny, but it's amazing technology he's talking about. He himself has studied ketones, a ketogenic diet since he was back in high school and a high school wrestler. I've had an amazing opportunity to talk with him about amazing technology. So if you heard Dr. Ford speak today, drop a nugget down that you heard that really kind of touched you or really kind of honed in about cognition. He talks about anti-aging. He talks about slowing down the aging brain, about longevity and how you really picture yourself when you're 80, 90, 100, 110 years old. And that's right, like you cannot buy your health. It's about health and wealth. And what do you want to have when you're 100 years old? Is it you want to have a bank full of money and not have your health? Or you want to have amazing health and not have a bank full of wealth? So we actually do do it wrong here in the U.S. We actually work, work, work really hard and not focus on our health, where a lot of other countries actually focus on their health until they're about 40 years old. And then they focus on their wealth. Where here in the U.S., we actually focus on our 
our wealth and then we try to grab and scuttle up and try to take care of our health and that's what's not helping very much because we see what's happening when we turn 40 that's when we see this big rise in heart disease and cancer and other disease processes so I'm not going to give much more away we also heard from Dr. Ryan Lowry and Dr. Jacob Wilson they are researchers experts in the health and nutrition world molecular biology they're always trying to biohack what the strength and nutrition world is trying to help other people they actually host a lot of combines for athletes who are trying out for a lot of the professional teams they run the ASPI down in Tampa Florida they've been all over muscle magazine they help formulate some of the ketones but the conversation really started about how do you actually biohack your own body what's the best fuel system for the body at the cellular level because they are scientists and researchers at the basic level they are also sports enthusiasts they also played college sports but currently they're really just trying to say how do we innovate this conversation how do we change a trajectory of what's happening with Americans or what's happening around the world with this rate of obesity or how do we get you know how did somebody learn to break the four minute mile so we I know I went back in time there but how did that happen because once one person does it then other people can do it so when we're looking at sports we're looking at athletic or we're looking at cracking the code to obesity or cracking the code to autism or cracking the code to um, what's happening with dementia and Alzheimer's how do we stop that ball from rolling down the hill how do we get that that stopping and how do we go back to the basics of where we didn't have this such big rise in diseases so they're really looking at that at a nutritional aspect a physiology aspect an exercise aspect and they break it down at the core basics from the elite athlete to the just normal person who's you know working day-to-day job so again more about that I'm not gonna go too much into that we also heard from the lovely dr. Mary Newport who is a neonatologist whose husband had an early onset of Lyme disease actually not Lyme disease, early onset of Alzheimer's. She does have some suspicion that he actually maybe had a tick bite that actually might have led on his very early onset of Lyme disease at the, sorry, Alzheimer's at the age of 52. I'm reading comments at the age of 52 and he accelerated very quickly. He was an accountant while she was a neonatologist taking care of newborn babies and she saw him quickly deteriorating. She tried to get him into many studies and this was back in 2008. We really didn't know much about Alzheimer's except for there was no cure and there was a couple medications, a couple studies out there. She was unable to get her husband Steve into those, but she was able to find some information what they were doing. And it just so happened to be coconut oil and some MCT, some palm kernel oil. Dr. Mary walked around and she started giving her husband palm kernel oil, coconut oil, whatever she could get into his body to bow tolerance. So that's as much as his tummy could take until he got bushy stools. And she saw rapid changes in the clock test, which is a standardized test for cognition. And she was seeing a much fast, rapid reversal of his cognition. She was seeing his brain changing. She was seeing, and you could go to um, YouTube and you can see um, on USA Today and ABC News, a four or five minutes uh, video on hers. Also, she has written four different books, three different books on Alzheimer's. What can we do to change or what's the cure for it? Um, or what if there were a cure for Alzheimer's? And there's three different books she's written really in memory of Steve back in 2013, an edition in August, edition in April, October, and then one in 2011, and then also in 2015, Coconut and the Low Carb Solution. that also talks about Parkinson's and other muscle movement disorders. So this isn't recent. She was writing this stuff back in 2011, 2013, 2010, when her husband Steve was having these rapid changes. She was taking little flyers around and sticking them in people's windshields at the grocery store because there wasn't Dr. Google, there wasn't word searches, there wasn't ways to just send them out through MailChimp or through constant contact. She was literally taking pieces of paper and handing them out at grocery stores saying, this is helping him. Coconut oil, it wasn't abundant at Sprouts or Whole Foods or things like that. It was much more difficult to get. So she went into a long story about that, but you guys missed it unless you were there and put KK down. And then today I'm really going to focus on what Dr. Andy talked about because that's a hot topic is about stress. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about Dr. Andy for about five to six minutes. And then I'm just going to summarize who's going to talk tomorrow and what they're going to touch on about. So you can get your pens and papers ready and you can stay awake if you're around the globe like people from Australia and people from um, I think I, we have people from England on here and someone from uh, Wales on here. So what we are talking about is stress. It is a trillion dollar epidemic problem. It is 75 to 90% of people go to the doctor because of stress. 
So let's think about that for a minute. Oftentimes when you think of stress, you just think, wow, I'm stressed out. People are agitating me or I'm so stressed out. I'm just paralyzed and don't know what to do. We've been sorting and cleaning around our house. I tell you what, I feel stressed. I don't know what to keep, what to throw away, what to put in a box, what to do. My youngest of four is going away to college next week. So it's kind of time to wrap some things up. Do we keep the shoots and ladders? You know, if the youngest is 18 or do we pack that away and put it away? Like at what point? you keep things out not put them out rotate the baby pictures and put up the graduation pictures everything is stress it's stress right now people are keeping their jobs we just learned that now all our kids are going to college everyone's going to get covid tested and then they send some of the kids home for a week or two or 10 days and now we just turned out to saliva test so anyway we've all experienced stress whether it's your coupon that didn't work or that you forgot to renew your driver's license or your tags or something like that but we know that the first point we have to start is with sleep when you know you have a high level of stress the first thing you do is focus on your sleep because sleep determines a lot of things so and this is what dr lillian is going to talk about in the morning i can't pronounce her last name but she is amazing at identifying the key points and the failure in the regulation of the neuron control centers in your brain which leads to the symptoms that is really causing the psychiatric dysfunction of the brain and it starts with sleep so we do know that when you're not sleeping, I have some notes, that's why I'm looking down. I've actually have a lot of notes. Um, we know that when you're not sleeping, and, and stress can cause a lack of sleep, your brain is not going to recover. So when you're only getting five to six hours of sleep a night and you're not getting as an adult seven to eight hours of sleep, kids should be getting 10 to 12 hours. You can go to the American Sleep Institute and you can see how many hours of sleep that kids should get. When you're not getting enough sleep, we know that five out of six causes of, so stress is a factor in five out of six causes of death. Those causes of death could be heart disease, it could be cancer, it could be stroke, it could be an accident, accident. You could be having road rage. That could be causing stress. We also know stress causes a lot of inflammatory diseases. Stress can cause autoimmune disease. What started as a stress is an ulcer can lead to ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis can lead to colon cancer. So it can start as a minor stress can lead to a lot. Stress can start out as a tension, maybe just tension in your shoulders can lead to a tension migraine, can lead to a pulmonary embolism. Tension can lead to just high blood pressure, to a stroke, to having, you know, having some type of heart attack it can just keep facilitating if you don't get the stress under control again when you know that when you're not sleeping it can cause a lot of dysfunction dysregulation in your hormones at night and we don't get those regularly when you're sleeping it just leads to a huge domino effect which generally leads to inflammation so when you recognize i have a lot of stress i can't seem to handle my stress you have to start with the easiest thing to fix first easiest thing to fix first i feel is generally getting some sleep and drinking water and then third thing is actually getting some healthy food in your body don't go for sugar i know sugar's it's highly addictive it hijacks your brain but you have to slow down and start saying you know what one thing i can do is i can eat more healthy diet i can let go of the sugar because sugar increases stress that's why a lot of people who have adhd they love that sugar because sugar excites the nervous system we all know that we know fats calm down the nervous system ketones calm down the nervous system because they increase GABA and dopamine, which are your feel-good hormones. So if you can do a ketogenic diet, you're too stressed out, you can't count the macros, it's too overwhelming for you, that's where pure exogenous ketones come into play. And she touched on that a little bit. So if you can do the diet, this is when you drink pure exogenous ketones because they're still going to calm down your nervous system. When you calm down the nervous system, you also calm down your blood pressure, you calm down your pulse, you calm down your digestion, which can ask, actually help a a lot of things when your digestion has calmed down, calm down the nausea, calm down, calm down the dumping of the gastric juices. We also know, and I'll share a video, and maybe Dr. Lillian's going to talk about this tomorrow. There's so many showing studies showing that when you go to sleep, when your body's in a state of ketosis, whether it's through a state of natural ketosis, your body's in ketogenesis, you're on a ketogenic diet, or you're drinking exogenous ketones, when your brain is in a state or your body's in a state of ketosis, as you go to sleep, your body's going to have a much easier time 
balancing out all that dysregulation that's happening when you sleep. It's going to have an easier time clearing out all that garbage and junk that's caught up during the middle of the day. And she's going to say it much more eloquently than I did, but she's going to talk a lot about the metaphysiology and cleaning up the metabolic debris while we're sleeping when your brain's in a ketogenic state. And we also know that when you have a lot of stress, you have to actually help the inflammation management. We know sugar increases inflammation and fats decrease inflammation. We also know that when you can reduce your time of eating, so eating in an eight hour window or a 10 hour window, not a 16 hour window, it helps calm down the nervous system so your body's not digesting food all day long. If you're in that old style of 80s eating and you're eating you know, every two to three hours, which we were told to do, so we were told to do. Now I'm telling you, don't do that. We know what we were doing back then has led to the state where you are today. When you're eating every two or three hours and you're doing this, all you're causing is a yo-yoing on your blood sugar. That yo-yoing is causing a lot of up and down of inflammation. It's causing a lot of havoc on your gut, on your liver, on your pancreas. A lot of stuff is happening when you're yo-yoing all that blood sugar. It's causing all that sugar to dump into your brain, dumping in your to your joints. When you can eat in an eight-hour period and then it stops, then the rest of the time, your body can do the kind of that light spring cleaning. It can get that insulin to really balance out. It can get your stomach to totally empty and just be done for the day, right? Just be done chewing, be done digesting food. Let it rest. Let it totally clean out. Let your bowels totally clean out. Rest and digest. Get all the, the gut bugs, I like to call them, all the enzymes in your stomach. Reset and overnight and then be ready for the next day. And then we also talked about, because people are always asking me, okay, I'm, I'm trying to eat right the best I can. I'm trying to do meditation. I'm trying to breathe. I'm listening to some ocean music. I'm drinking water. What else can I do for that? Because we are exposed to other things in the environment. We're exposed to toxins. Maybe you work in a nail salon or maybe you work on the road crew and you're exposed to the toxins off the road that are happening. Or maybe you work um, at the airline um, at airline, and you're one of the flag people and you're exposed to jet fuel or things like that. Or maybe you work in the inside the airline. You're a captain or an airline attendant and you don't get a lot of fresh air. There's other things you can do. So you can use things like Seabed, which is a part of Cat's Claw. It's a formulated blend, but it helps repair your DNA. So it helps really keep your body from aging or oxidating as fast as it can. We also know Andrographis. She talked about that as a natural herb. We've used it for years in our office as a natural antibiotic. It's just something that you can use because, again, it's a natural herb. You can use it as a natural antibiotic because normal antibiotics, you know, you can't use all the time because your body builds up a resistant to it. Something that's a natural herb like you eat garlic as a natural herb, thyme is a natural herb, rosemary, andrographis, you can use a lot of thyme. We know vitamin D we found 20 years ago when I was suggesting vitamin D, I was told it's fat soluble, it's gonna make people sick. Now we know that vitamin D is a hormone. It has so many amazing properties. Low vitamin D can be one of the biggest predictor of heart disease and cancer. So we recommend in our clinic that an optimal level of vitamin D is 75 to 100 nanogram per unit. So 75 to 100 is optimal. Often yeah, I am back though. Great. So um, it was refreshing there. So vitamin C, anywhere from three to five grams or to bowel tolerance. If you take too much vitamin C, you're gonna, just going to get mushy stool. So it's cleaning out a little bit of stuff. Keeping your body nice and acidic with vitamin C because your stomach's nice and acidic. When you're eating processed food, fry food, it tends to change the pH of your stomach. When you're actually eating or taking vitamin C and take a time-release buffered C, keeping your body um, higher in vitamin C allows your body to be nice and acidic. So critters, viruses, bacteria, parasites, tapeworms, all those things can't grow in an environment that's acidic, so that's why it's so important. It also inhibits an inflammatory cascade called NLRP3 inflammasome. So if you're known to have inflammation, you can check with your healthcare provider before starting any supplements. But these are things that you can do in addition to meditation and exercising and sweating and eating properly and sleeping properly. Also, zinc is great antiviral. It's great for your brain. It's great for hormone. It's great for manufacturing testosterone. So if you're a person who's early gray, and it's not in your family history. There's a test called a zinc tally test. You can ask your healthcare provider about that. It's a very simple test to do. 
zinc tally test. Um, I can put that video down below tomorrow because I'm almost out of my video time for tonight. So I have my blue blocker glasses on. But you can do a zinc, simple zinc tally test just to see if you're low on zinc. It's an oral test that you do. You don't have to do a blood test on that to see if you need to take zinc. Also, there's so much rising information the last really 36 to 48 months on melatonin. Yes, your body makes melatonin in the presence of darkness. It wouldn't be, you know, I have all these lights in my eyes and I'm popping a bunch of melatonin so I can stay up all night so I can sleep. That's not the reason we take it. Melatonin does an amazing job at actually decluttering and debriefing and defragging all that stuff that's cluttered up in the lymphatic system of your brain. It's also a great antiviral, but it's a clean antiviral. And what that means is it doesn't take any of the damage tissue with it. Think about this. If you have like a brown spot in your apple, you have to cut out a little bit of the good stuff to get the brown stuff out. When it's a clean antiviral, it only cuts out exactly what's damaged. So it only takes the brown part of the apples out. It doesn't take any of the extra stuff out. So it's a very clean one. When we talk about dosing of that, we're going to do a long talk about these supplements for our immune system. But just things that you can do is really de-stressing. And that's really the point of my talk. I know I've gone a little bit because I'm super excited about this. But knowing that the 21st century health epidemic is stress. Yes, you can use essential oil. Somebody asked me about that. Absolutely. Yes, you can do herbs like CBD. Yes, you can take Epsom salt bath. Yes, you can do yoga. Yes, you can do CrossFit. Yes, you can run. There are so many amazing things you can do. Acupuncture, chiropractic, Reiki. Yes, yes, yes to all those type of things. But do know this, your body must breathe to survive. You can't go very long without that. You must drink water. You can only go two or three days without water. There is a better source of water and there are poor sources of water. But first start with water, like bubbly water, I'd say, drink water first. Don't go for all the effervescent stuff. And we could talk about Kangen, reverse osmosis, water softeners. First, just get water and at least half your body's weight in water. Another eight or 10 ounces if you drink caffeine, another eight or 10 ounces if you're out in a hot environment all day long or work in a hot environment drink water, get electrolytes. Those are essential for life. Dr. Ryan, Dr. Jacob also talked a little bit about electrolytes and clean amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks to your body. They are essential. We have essential fatty acids and we have an essential amino acids. Essential means necessary for survival. That means to be in existence here on our earth. Our body stores about 40,000 calories at a minimum. 2,000 calories of those are sugar. So we can go a few days. So if you know that your body burns maybe 2,500 calories a day, if you didn't eat any carbohydrates, your body would go through most of the sugar in a day or two. And then you'd be in ketosis because then you start tapping into your fat. But remember, when you're eating nuts or you're eating even like celery and things like that, it's going to have a few carbs in it. Even protein requires insulin has a few carbs in it. So if you know your body stores at the minimum 40,000 stored calories, 2,000 calories of that is carbohydrates, you can go a few days without food. However, your body is its own pharmacy. It takes the foods that we eat and turns that around and makes all of the resources in our body for our immune system, for healthy bones, for healthy lung tissue, for healthy all tissue, for healthy hair tissue. People talk to me all the time about hair loss on a keto diet. Well, we actually make hair from amino acids and from collagen. So are you eating some bone broth? Are you eating some ligaments? Are you having enough healthy, clean protein in your diet? So we'll talk about that another day. I do want to just chat about who's talking tomorrow so you can still get some tickets for tomorrow it is free guys i can't believe it. it's free so dr lillian is a neuroscience psychologist neurologist and physicist from georgetown university she is a human a human brain <laughs> mapping specialist so she is at 11 a.m eastern standard time so you can just click and register for that she's going to really talk about and identifying the key points of failure in the regulation or dysregulation of the neural control of the circuits of the brain so again i really she talks about sleep all the time which i absolutely love so she's going to talk about the signs and symptoms that lead to the, the dysregulation and really where we get the diagnosis of some of the psychiatric diseases she's going to talk about why ketones are such a better fuel source for the brain over carbohydrates and why as we have a broken brain as we age or if we've had a damaged brain through a car wreck or through um, 
you know, you've fallen down the stairs when you were a baby or you're in a motor vehicle accident or you had several concussions or you have type 3 diabetes, which is also known as Alzheimer's or any other type of that aging brain, a high carbohydrate diet, why the body does not efficiently uptake glucose for energy as we age, but it still 100% of the time uptakes ketones as an aging brain or broken brain. I'll let her talk more about that and about clean metabolic sleep. And then at 11.45, we have Dr. Daniel Amen. So most of you have heard of him, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. I'll let you look him up. He's a psychiatrist and also a brain health expert. He's written over eight or co-authored over 80 articles, over 40 different books, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. If you've heard of Dr. Amen, put a brain down below. I know lots of us heard about him. And then we will have Jen Glover at 1215 Eastern Time talking about human potential. And also she is a retired national fitness competitor. So she's going to talk about motivation and inspiration and just conquering and getting to your goals. Then we're going to have Brendan Egan at 115. He actually did his TED talk on... Uh, muscling in on healthy aging. So I'm excited to hear about that because I'm all about longevity. I won't go much into his, but it's optimizing performance, optimizing exercise through healthy aging and slowing down the aging process. And then two o'clock, we have the Iron Cowboy. So his name is James Lawrence. I've heard him speak before. 50 Iron Man, 50 days and 50 days straight. So 50 triathlons. So 50 Ironmans, not just triathlons, in 50 states in 50 days, he took his wife and his children with him. Think about that for a minute. It is an amazing story. Go YouTube these guys tonight. I will post again all the links. All you do is click and sign up and click and sign up. There are seats limited. Some of these webinars can only hold so many people. So register tonight. It is absolutely free. You will not be sorry. You will get a link via email. So you have to register for each and every one of those. But super excited to have you guys join us. You will not be sorry for the information that's out there. And you'll be like me. You'll be taking all these notes and you will be like, man, I wish I would have listened to that a little bit more and had could have written faster. I wish I could have stopped that. But thanks again for joining me. If there's a topic that was super hot for you, please share it down below so we know what you thought was like super interesting and what really called out to you. I do think we'll talk a little bit more about stress throughout the week. We'll break that down a little bit slower and if you've got some tactics that really work best for you and you're finding some things work well for your stress, whether it's horseback riding, beating out in nature more, I don't know, getting away from toxic friends, toxic relationships, but knowing that stress is a 21st century health epidemic, a trillion dollar deficit in our health industry. We can change that guys. We got to turn the positivity up. We got to change what we're eating. We got to change how we're thinking. We got to get moving more because we know that movement increases our positivity, increases our brain, increases our lymphatic attitude. And then we got to get a tribe around us that actually lift us up and help our light shine. It's that easy. So again, this is Dr. Heather Cargan coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather, also known as the Keto Doc. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I'm trying to figure that out. Instagram is also Ask Dr. Heather. YouTube channel and blog is Ask Dr. Heather. Recipes you can find there for some easy, fun keto stuff to talk, to cook or paleo, low carb, however you choose to mix up your carbs on that. But you guys will be seeing me tomorrow. So I'll be just debriefing some of the stuff tomorrow. They run back to back. So I thought I'd be, t I've, thought I'd jump in between here between the t speakers, but I don't have time because they just run back to back to back. So you guys have a great day and I'll be checking with you tomorrow night. And again, let me know where you're joining from. Let me know if you're watching on replay and you have my permission to share. So have a great day guys and we'll see you tomorrow.